Hello friends, this is Raj Sastri from Raj Option Trading. Today, January 30, 2022, let's talk about top international ETFs. We got a few top here, top ETFs here. First one is EEM, emerging market, as many of you know. Look, it's done 40% in the last five years. And then you got China, as you can see here. China has done just 10% in the last five year, years. China has been under underperforming off late, as you can see here. And then you got here a few more. Uh, we got um, EWZ here. EWZ is uh, lagging in the market in the last five years, as you can see here. So we look at many of these ETFs and see how they're doing and go from there. Let's uh, jump in. So first, let's look at the uh, top international ETF. And we're looking at uh, Morningstar grade four or five. These are top gradings from Morningstar and also volume more than 1 million, 1 million ETF traded. That tells you these are liquid ETFs. Let's, let's look at that list here and go from there. So as you see here, we got the uh, top ETFs with the Morningstar ratings, uh, four or five, and also nice healthy volume. Look, top of the list, we got VEA, which is a Vanguard fund here. Uh, I like Vanguard funds a lot when it comes to, you know, both international and U.S., mainly because they got very low expense ratio. International ETFs come with a high expense ratio and typically high turnover ratio. Turnover. Look, uh, Vanguard has done very nicely in last uh, five and ten years with the very very low expense ratio. That's why I love Vanguard. And look here, all these ETFs have got nice four or five rating from Morningstar. And we got Taiwan here. Taiwan is doing great, as you can see here. It done very nice. Uh, 216% in last 10 years and also nice in last five years. And this carries a little bit higher expense ratio as you can see here, but this is, uh, this is norm when it comes to international investing. And look, India has been doing great as you can see here. India, uh, look, it's done nice 74% in last five years. And it's also has got a uh, uh, full rating from Morningstar, which is very good. And I've got a few more as you see here. Um, you know, this is sorted by Morningstar uh, rating here, either four or five. Look at the performance in five years. They've done great as you see here. So that's why, you know, as you buy and sell and invest in U.S. equities, it's also good to look at international equity and take a look at top international ETFs and buy some and hold it for diversification. So with that, next we'll look at... Uh, uh, top international ETFs with Morningstar rating, either four or uh, rating just three, as you can see here. You know, three is also a good rating. Let's look at this list here and go from there. All right. So these are all the ETFs with the Morningstar rating, three, and as volume greater than one million uh, ETFs traded. Top of the list we got here, um, EEM. It's sorted by volume, as you can see here. The top one has got most volume. We got EEM, emerging market. Uh, it's been struggling off late. Uh, year to date, it's just uh, down 3.20%. It's just one month when you say year to date. We are just in January right now. And look, it's done great in 10 years. So that's why it's, uh, you know, it's uh, it's good to look at EEM, which is down big time. Um, you know, as you see here, one year, 11%. And in year to date, it's 3.20%. Uh, Don't expect huge return from EEM because look, uh, by looking at the past year, it's done 40% in five years and 37% in 10 years. And then you got a few more here. EFA is a little more, little better from a performance perspective look it's done great 92 percent in 10 years and it also carries a little bit lower expense ratio you know pay pay attention to both expense ratio as well as the turnover ratio uh, typically you know when the turnover ratio is high you know if you're carrying it in a um, you know in a personal portfolio and not in a tax def tax deferred retirement portfolio you might end up, uh, you know, paying some capital gain taxes. That's why you got to make sure turnover ratio is uh, relatively low. Look, uh, one here, ASHR, look at the turnover ratio, very high turnover ratio. It's good to avoid such ETFs with a high turnover ratio because um, if you're holding it in a, you know, non-retirement account, you will end up you know, paying capital gain taxes. 
And I got a few more as you can see here. We got IEFA, it's a um, core MSCI, and this also had done good as you can see here. It's done 46% in last five years. You could look at uh, these ETFs here. And one of my favorite is uh, VGK, which is um, you know, which is from Morningstar. Look at Morningstar. They have mastered the art of low expense ratio. Look at the expense ratio, 0 0.08. I'm wondering how they provide this uh, type of low expense ratio. But look at the performance. They've done great. So I would rather go with the ETFs like Morningstar with the low, um, with the low expense ratio. That will serve you very well. And also look here. We got one more here. All Morningstar ETFs come with the a little lower expense ratio here. That's why it's uh, good to buy them. And we've got a few more as you scan through here. Keep watching the expense ratio as well as turnover ratio. So you want lower expense ratio and lower turnover ratio. As you see here, we've got one more here. This is the mother of all international ETFs, which is the V. VXUS from Vanguard. I know many people holding this. Look, it's got highest net asset under the uh, under the leadership here. Um, it's a, one of the biggest ETF. Look at the expense ratio. Very, very, very low here. And it's got a uh, you know, very nice 10-year performance. So if you're one of those uh, steady eddy hold, buy and hold ETF uh, person, just buy some VXUS and just forget about it. Uh, you will do very well. You could also invest on a monthly basis um, or when the market is down. And we've got a few more as you see here. Um, all are doing well. And keep watching. I, I also like Schwab. Schwab has been doing great of late. They've been offering ETFs with a lower expense ratio. Look, Schwab has got 0 0.11, which is not, not, uh, not bad at all. And they've done nicely in a five year and 10 year. And we've got a few more as you see here. We'll jump in and look at a few more with the rating three. So it's a continuation. Again, all these are come, come with the Morningstar rating uh, three. And it's also sorted by volume. Um, top stocks have got, uh, top ETF, uh, ETFs have got more uh, volume as you see here. And I just scan through here. Keep watching the expense ratio. IXUS, it's a core um, MSCI. This carries a very, very low expense ratio. It's done pretty okay in five years. You could take a look at such uh, ETFs with a lower expense ratio and also lower turnover ratio. And we got one more here, IDEV, same story, a lower expense ratio. Um, and you could uh, look at that one too here. And it's done nicely as you can see here. And I love Schwab. Schwab has been doing a nice job of late. They got this small cap here and they also carry low interest rate. And it's done great. Look at the performance of Schwab here. You know, even one year when all the stocks are going down, this CTFs have done well and it's done great in 10 year. So with that, let's uh, look at next category here. Next category is really um, Morningstar rating one and two and volume greater than one million shares. So this is the list here. Uh, look, FXI on top here. It's uh, many of you know FXI, it's a chain of large cap ETF. Uh, this has been struggling as you can see here. Year to date, it's a negative performance and um, it's done okay in last five years and 10 years, but it's struggling with the China go Chinese government cracking down on Chinese uh, stocks and stock market and distributing the wealth. That's why FXI is taking a hit here. I think, you know, if you see here last one month, it's uh, improving. So I could make a case here. It could be good to slowly start buying FXI, which is Chinese large cap ETF. Given it's uh, completely, um, you know, down, look, one year it's down. So I think it's uh, time to slowly start investing in some of these Chinese ETFs here, like FXI. And then you got Brazil. Look, Brazil is uh, beaten down completely. They got a high inflation problem, as many of you might be knowing. Uh, look, it's the 10 year, it's down. So Brazil is turning around right now. So look, it's done nice in one year and uh, three, one month and three months. At this time, you could slowly buy some EWZ. They will do well. I think uh, slowly they will start turning around and they will start showing positive performance in one year, five year and 10 year. This is the time for us to slowly start buying both FXI, which is Chinese stock, which is uh, just turning around as you can see here, and also EWZ, Brazil ETF, which uh, just turned the corner in last one month and three months. 
and then you got your EFV this is also a good one it's also turning around as you can see here you could slowly buy this one also this car is a 34 0 0.35 percent expense ratio which is not too bad and you got a few more I also like FEZ which is uh, one of my favorite ETF and this carries a uh, um, 0.29 expense ratio, which is not too bad, which done great as you can see here. So if you want to buy a Europe ETF, I suggest uh, go with the you know ETFs like FEZ. Uh, that's a good one here. And then you got all country ETF as you see here. If you want to buy all country, this is the way to go here. It's also done great. Uh, carries a little bit higher expense ratio. And look, we got Shop here. Shop is again doing great. I like their uh, poor ETFs. Look, they've done good. Very low expense ratio, as you can see here. Also nice performance in the uh, last five years. So with that, uh, let's jump in and look at next segment here. All right, now we are looking at, uh, you know, no rating from Morningstar, but nice volume. This could be no rating because it could be, um, you know, because Morningstar did not look at it, but it's, let's take a look at those. So here we got here all these ETFs. They don't have a Morningstar rating, um, probably because these are country country specific ETFs. Many of these are country specific ETFs, as you see here. As you look through here, keep watching the expense ratio, and also turnover ratio, and also look at what is uh, turning around. Look at one month to understand one month and three month to understand the turnover uh, turnaround candidates. Uh, look, we got uh, EWA at the top here, Australia. Australia, as you know, uh, doing pretty okay off, you know, um, you know, off late, it's uh, doing not so great as you see here. It's done great in 10 year and uh, five year. So also as a little, you know, expense ratio is okay, not too bad. So you could uh, buy some EWA for turnaround story here. Stock has been, ETF has been battered as you see here. And we got Russia. Russia also a lot of geopolitical issues, as many of you know. Russia has been struggling of late, down 12%. It's in a correction territory, as you can see. I think it's it may be okay to slowly start buying some Russia. I think they do have geopolitical issues. But look for five year and ten year, they've done okay. Right now, it's a you know a little bit tough situation. That's when you start buying some of this ETF. And UK, after all these Brexit uh, issues, it's turning around nicely, as you see here. They're, they're done nicely, 1.8% in the uh, last uh, year to date, but has done great, as you see here, in the uh, last uh, 10 years, as well as five years. And then you got a few more, as you can scan through here. And look, we got FLGB, which is Franklin United. This one uh, is trying to turn around, as you see here. This. Uh, could be okay to slowly start buying, but this also low interest, low expense ratio as we see here. So with that, let's uh, <clears throat> look at a few more. Look, we got one more here. Uh, Spain, Spain also is turning around slowly. Uh, look, uh, in one month, it's uh, just 0.0%. That also is a good one to slowly buying for turnaround type candidates here. And even France, after doing great, look, 131% in last 10 years. It's also turning around in last six months, even though it's down for the year, which is not in a correction territory, meaning it's not down 10% yet. All right, let's look at a few more here. Now we are looking at largest ETF. So I typically like to invest, you know, when it comes to international ETF, it's good to go with the big ETFs. So that way, you know, these are stable ETFs. You could put your money. Look, we got uh, top of the list, we got Vanguard. Vanguard is doing great with the international ETFs. I like their lineup. Look at the top of the list here, we got Vanguard Total International. Look at the net asset, it's the maximum or highest net asset. 418 um you know billion dollars under asset here it's one of the you know biggest uh, etf and look uh, it's, it's been doing great in uh, one year and five year and ten year so if you're one of those uh, person who want to uh, want exposure internationally and don't want the hassle just by vxus and just forget forget about it they will do a great job and then you got one more here Again, Vanguard, look at this one. This has uh, even done much better. Um, it's uh, It's got a four rating for a Morningstar, which is a good rating. And performance perspective, they've done great. 100% in last, last 10 years. You could buy that one too. 
And as you has you notice here, first three uh, largest international ETFs are from Vanguard. Um, and uh, look look at the net assets, nice net assets. And this is sorted by net assets. Top ETFs have got highest net assets. From there, it's a descending order. And you know, keep watching five-year performance. Many of these ETFs have done nicely in last five years. And right now in one year, many of them are struggling. And keep watching the ETFs which are turnaround type candidates here. Look, this one here, EAFE. Um, look, it's uh, turning around as you, as you see here. It's turning around in one month and also, um, you know, in a six month time frame. I think this could be a good one to slowly buy and go from there. And we've got a few more. I also like uh, Schwab ETFs. They've been doing a great, great job here. You could look at some of those also. And Europe, VGK, again, it's a good one. You could look at that one also. It has done nicely, as you see here. And we've got a few more top performers performers here, SCZ, SCZ here, uh, small cap, look, it's done a nicely four rating from Morningstar, which is one of the good ratings, has done 132% in last 10 years, that's also a good one here, and we got a few more as you see here. So next we look at next category here, uh, it's a continuation, uh, ETFs by uh, top net asset here, as you see here, net asset, it's a descending order. Now we are looking at little lower net assets as you see here. Keep watching the performance. Uh, look at the performance uh, right here. Taiwan. Taiwan is uh, in the epicenter of semiconductor uh, innovation. Look, it's got a five rating from Morningstar. Has done great, 216% in last 10 years. And right now it's uh, struggling a little bit in the near term in one month, but it's a good one. You could buy some Taiwan ETF and go from there. And we got a few more. I like uh, Schwab as usual. They always do a good job. And we got a few more with nice uh, rating here. Look, EZU, Eurozone. It's done great. Uh, it's struggling right now as it's year, year to date negative, but it's a good one. Nice 10 year performance. And we got a few more as you can see here. Schwab is doing great job. Look, Schwab has done 91% in the last 10 years. Nice three rating. And we got one more with a nice Morningstar rating right here. And this one has done 63% in 10 years. Carries a five rating from Morningstar. And we got two more here. Look, we got uh, two more here with a nice four rating from Morningstar. Look, we got India. India is doing great, 74% in last 10 years. And you could uh, buy this one also. It's a good one here. And we've got ESG Aware. That's also doing great. 10-year, 48%. And it's got a 4 rating from Morningstar. So with that, let's look at a few more here. All right. Now what we'll do is uh, let's look at the performers, top performers, performers in one year and see who they are. So from a top performance, performer perspective, look, uh, this is uh, sorted by one year performance. You know, past one year has been very, very brutal, as many of you know. But these ETFs, these international ETFs have put, put nice growth here, nice performance, even in last one year, which is brutal. Look, Canada has been doing great in last one year. And uh, it's look, it's uh, year to date just negative uh, in last uh, one month or so, but nice performers uh, performance. You could buy some Canada ETF and hold it for a long time. And as you see here, we got a few more. Uh, these are all uh, top performers. Next one is here, currency hedged. This one has uh, done okay with all the currency hedging going on. Uh, look, it's done uh, 57% in five year and carries a 5.53 um, expense ratio, which is not too bad. And India, again, India is doing great. You could uh, look at buying some India uh, and uh, hold it for a while. And France is also okay. So keep watching, you know, typically, you know, if you are a turnaround type person, look at the ETFs where he's struggling in the longer term. For example, right here, Mexico, struggling in the longer term. Look at the 10 year, he's struggling. But I think, you know, it could be improving as you speak here. You could look at such candidate for a turnaround type candidate, struggling in 10 year, but it's trying to improve in one year um, and uh, five years. So those are the turnaround type candidates here. So with that, let's look at the next category here. Next, we look at top performer by looking at last five-year performer performance. These are a little more, you know, uh, 
proved and tested. They've done not just in one year, but they've done nicely in last five years. So this is the list here, as you see here, keep watching, five-year performance right here. The stock or ETF on the top here, EWT, look, Taiwan, Taiwan again on top here. Taiwan is doing great. Uh, they've done nicely in the last five years. Carry said nice five rating from Morningstar here. And, uh, you know, all the chip innovation, semiconductors, that's what's happening. That's why um, Taiwan is doing very well. Look, next is Switzerland here. They're doing nicely. You could uh, buy some Switzerland ETF also here. And it carries a 0 0.5 expense ratio, not too bad. It's been uh, struggling off late, as you can see here, and has done nicely uh, in last five and 10 years. And we got India that we talked about. Uh, India is doing great in the last five years. You could uh, slowly buy some India ETF when the uh, market gets better and hold it for a while. And we've got a few more as you see here. You could uh, buy these names. Keep watching uh, expense ratio. You don't want too much, too high expense ratio. You know, typically norm is, you know, about 1% for international ETF, but I say, you know, stay below 0.50%. That will serve you very good. All right, let's look at uh, um, one more segment here. Let's look at, uh, Top performers in 10 years. These are really for long-term long-term investors. You got to be looking at longer-term uh, performance here. So look look here. All these stocks have got nice 10-year uh, performance. Look, it's sorted by 10-year performance. And top of the list, as you can see here, Taiwan again. Uh, all the chip innovation, semiconductor, that's the driving this economy here. Nice five rating from Morningstar. And then you got Japan here, Japan hedged, you know, DXJ. has done nicely. Uh, it's also good here. Carries a three rating from Morningstar. Nice performance, as you see here. And then you got Switzerland again on top. That's a good one. You could buy that one too. And so on, so forth. So I say take a look at this list here. Keep watching the expense ratio here. Uh, all you know, lower expense ratio relatively. You could uh, take a look at those and buy them and diversify not only in US but also outside. So with that, uh, thank you very much. Happy investing and trading. Please subscribe.